Hey, this is Matt from Investiquant. Today is Thursday, August 11, 2022. Yesterday was a big day for the markets. Most of the move came in the uh, pre-market session following the CPI report. We had a sizable up gap, just over 70 points in the S&P, followed by a bit of a consolidation day. So after we opened, we had a, a quick test lower that bounced and then consolidated into the afternoon. But with the sizable up gap and holding of those prices, we closed up above the R3 pivot, which doesn't happen all that often. So that's what we're going to be using for today's study is what has happened following a close above R3. Let me go ahead and get this set up. I've got all four instruments selected. The setup's based upon entering long at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time, exiting at 4.15 p.m. Eastern time. Now, currently, we are trading higher in the overnight session. So I'm going to go through the opening filters library, click on gap up from the gap direction. The next thing is is in the price patterns library. And this is where I'm gonna find the R3 pattern. And I'm gonna to go to the active today, which is telling you what is true for today. And if I go to where was the location of the last close, I can scroll down just a little bit. There it is, it closed above R3. I'm gonna click there. You can see it's been added to the test. It comes from this category right here. And if I scroll down, this is a long list. There it is. Uh, you can look at things of all the different um, pivot points. You can look at closes at all the different locations there. So uh, that's been selected. The last thing I want to do is head down to the indicators library. Say yesterday closed below a 200-day simple moving average. And then I can click view results. And here we go. These are the results based upon entering the market long at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, exiting at 4.15 p.m. Eastern Time when you are gapping up and the prior session closed above R3 but below 200-day simple moving average. Historically, 22 samples here in the S&P, 20 in the NASDAQ, 25 in the Dow, 20 in the Russell. Win rates on these are neutral to weak. You've got S&P a bit weak here, 41%. NASDAQ, 55%. Dow, 48%. Russell, 40%. So two of these about 40% with the S&P and the Russell being the weakest of the group. If we look at the average moves, you'll see the average loss is larger than the average win in all four instruments. So all four of these have larger moves on average to the downside than the moves to the upside. The win rates a bit mixed with a couple of them coming in weak. So historically speaking, uh, just slightly weak on this pattern with bigger moves happening to the downside. Hopefully you found that helpful. Good luck today. We will see you next time.